So hello, uh, good morning, evening or afternoon, depending on when you are tuning into this latest, latest Susty Talk interview from ED. Susty Talks are our ongoing series of video interviews with uh, sustainability, climate, nature uh, and energy leaders, which was first launched during the first lockdown here in the UK uh, more than two years ago now, which is crazy to think about. And it's continuing two years later to help keep us informed, inspired and connected on all things to do with climate and sustainability. And this latest interview comes just days after world leaders uh, met in Davos to outline the agenda and focus points for political and global discussions moving forward. Um, we've got a great roundup on the site already that outlined what went on at Davos. But for this Susty Talk, we are joined by someone who was on the ground there, <clears throat> which is Julia Carboni, the NCS Alliance Director for the World Business Council on Sustainable Development. So, Julia, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me. We were just discussing off camera. It's been quite a, a, a journey for, for, for you um, to and from a delay in London because of uh, the flight <laughs> issues there. But thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Matt, for the invitation. We should have another session about flights and their responsibility, but that's another story. Um, no, thank you very much. I actually was in Davos last uh, week and that was my first time in Davos and uh, was pretty uh, well, it, it was quite surprising about, you know, how many, you know, uh, interesting people and it's not just about big business or the big CEOs. I think that was for me was incredibly enriching to see that there were so many, you know, civil society organizations and people that actually work on conservation or, you know, development or, you know, sustainability in general. Um, I, you know, have been part of the sustainability movement for many, many years. I will not say how many, but um, I've been to many of these congresses, you know, IUCN where I used to work. And I actually felt like I was one of this, I was attending one of the sustainability congress. And then all the sounds like, I'm at the World, World Economic Forum. But then I thought, well, it's really, you know, something to celebrate, to be, you know, at the center of the business conversation and so much, so much was dedicated to sustainability in the different aspects, you know, uh, equity and climate change, environment, biodiversity and hunger, uh, you name it, but it was all over. So the problem is, again, as some, you know, sometimes happens when there's too much, then we can't be everywhere. So I will try to give you, a not, you know, kind of my summary, but obviously it's far from being uh, complete because I wasn't being, I mean, I also wasn't, you know, allowed in some of the more or, um, strict and high level parts but you know the rumor was out about what were the key issues being discussed yeah no i noticed that at, um at cop last year as well it felt much more kind of global inclusive and also diverse in the types of voices going around you do think it's just going to be a kind of you know almost like a boredom table full of all these like really powerful people but it does seem that the the message yeah. is uh diversifying and um Julia, i suppose a great place to start for our audience would be just a bit about you and, and your role at the, the, at the council you know what is a uh, you probably don't have a day to day it's all probably quite different but what's your kind of remit that, that, that yeah. you're kind of focusing on so i'm the director of the natural climate solution alliance which is like um platform that brings together businesses, but also NGOs and what we call solution providers in the space of, of uh, natural climate solution carbon credits. It's a co-convened by the World Business Council and the World Economic Forum. Um, but I am an, an employee of the World Business Council. Uh, my day today is really about basically defining, you know, trying to get to where we want to be with natural climate solutions, basically is raising the um, prof profile of natural climate solution as a solution to climate change and also making sure that there is a clarity on what is the, what are the requirements for uh, uh, credible investments in natural climate solution, both from the demand side and from the supply side. So there is a lot of work going on with the members and the members, basically, this is like a think tank of like minded organization and people that really believe that na nature is can be part of the solution, but we have to do it well. And that little word well <laughs> takes a lot to spell it out. What does it mean well? And um, so that's basically my day to day mobilizing members. Uh, we are working on a number of, of products. So like two weeks ago, we launched uh, Lighthouses, which are examples of um, good projects on the ground that have made a difference, not just from the climate mitigation perspective, but also from conservation and social and economic development. So we try to tell the stories more from the 
people's voice. So the stories from the climate voice have been told before. These are projects that are well known, but we did a series of interviews with the people on the ground that we tried to capture uh, in these lighthouses where the people that have benefited from these investments really had the chance to tell their side of the story, why carbon, the carbon market is really a good thing for them that has changed their lives. So that's part of my job. It's really exciting, actually, really, really exciting. No, it is. I mean, we, we, we hear so much about the carbon markets at Edian, and it's predominantly through the business lens of it's helping them decarbonize or at least offset. And that's the kind of primary measurement of value for a business. But that kind of economic and social aspect is, I think, a, a value that a lot of organizations are finding really hard to actually uh, articulate. So it's great to see that that kind yeah. of nuance come forward. Um, we've obviously discussed, you know, you mentioned a lot happened at Davos, that the conversations were very rich, very, very quick, very frequent. But in terms of around kind of nature and those carbon markets, what were the kind of key messages that you took away from those discussions that, that you kind of got to participate in and, and see at Davos? You know, what is the kind of trajectory in this market right now? Well, I think the first a message, like a general conversation that applies to all type of credits, which is the question about integrity. And really, they need to have a clear understanding of what integrity means. That's another one of these words that is, we use regularly. But then if you tell me what is integrity, you need to spell it out with a clear set of criteria. That's it. You know, integrity means different things to different people, but also different things depending on what you're applying it to. To the carbon market means something that now is being spelled out by the Integrity Council for Voluntary Carbon Market. And uh, this is actually a great opportunity to have this interview now because in in a month or so the stand the um, uh, core carbon principles will be issued for will be released for um, for consultation and it is an immense opportunity for everybody everybody in different parts of society from business to NGOs to solution providers communities governments to have a say then once that is is done, then we have a common, it's a common language. When we say a carbon credit is following these principles and criteria, then we know that, you know, we are speaking the same language. What does it mean for in terms of all the different elements that are related to carbon? I'm not gonna go into the detail, but let's say, you know, the additionality, which is so critical, it will define how to do it, right? So we will all have the same understanding of what additionality means. We will all follow the same rule. And that is really important. Also because it's being done with a very strong governance system that allows participation from NGOs, make sure that those who actually are gonna have, um, are gonna benefit, don't have uh, an, ex you know, an extra voice. I mean, it's a really multi-stakeholder process, really well managed. So. I think that is a crit critical point that we need to get on board. And again, it might not be perfect, but it's going to be a real game changer for the community. And I really think, I really hope everybody comes on board. You know, of course, we will all want to go. I already have my views on, oh, I wish they had add this or I wish they had put more focus on that. But that will happen. But I think at least at the beginning, we all have to come on board on the same concepts and on the same understanding. And that's for the integrity. The second piece that I think was stressed a lot and by, you know, also very senior level, you know, CI, you know, CEOs and others is the importance of recognizing nature as part of the solution. If we don't do that, there is so much we can do about climate change, finding technological solution that will be available in 2014, 2050 but we will never get there. Nature has to be part of the solution today and it's ready to do it today. And that means, and it's really not an either or game saying, oh, we have to invest only on nature and forget the you know, more technological solutions, for example, for removals. Technological solutions for removals are gonna be very important, but before they are available at scale, it will take a lot of years. Nature, we need nature now because nature is such a part of the, let's say, the equilibrium of our planet, right? We can't fix climate if we don't fix nature. I mean, this is actually something that I thought if finally, in most of the conversations, the two topics are coming together. Usually it was, we only talk about climate change and they're the climate tribe, and then there is the conservation tribe. <laughs> and now finally, it's clear these two tribes are actually the same tribe. We have to come together. Nature is part of the climate solution. 
but is also affected by climate. So the two things have to be managed, really managed together. And this is the an amazing opportunity, which is this is the definition of a natural climate solution that brings nature and climate together through also the community and the people. Because if people are not at the table, you're not going to have neither climate nor nature, you know, problem solved. So that's basically the spirit that I thought it was really good. You know, the the conversation going there, like having people that have worked on climate all their lives, speaking at events on climate and finally saying we are we have we are in this together. So one is a solution to the other and we have to move on the same in the same direction. Do you think that's going to kind of translate down to to, to business level? I mean, I've, I've I've read through a lot of sustainability reports, whether it's standalone now they're integrated, they're all sorts in my time, and and nature kind of was almost just tucked away. It was kind of this. It was kind of more of the kind of CSRE type. It was like you know volunteering initiatives around nature, or maybe there was some yeah. tree planters. It was very kind of like here's a nice nice to have bit, bit fluffy success story. But but now we're seeing, as you mentioned, you know. When, when when climate and nature are so kind of interrelated, are we seeing, you know, do, do businesses now need to start looking scientifically at nature the way they are now looking at kind of carbon and, and the climate crisis? Well, first of all, I think, well, I I see the businesses that are usually, on, you know, the leaders that have worked mm. on the business and biodiversity area for over 15 years. So my answer would be yes. But I also know that it's not at the same level as nature, um, as climate. However, if you look at what is happening now, you know, you have uh, a task force on nature that will move to the issue at the same level as climate. So disclosure about what are your risks as a company. So all of a sudden, it's not just, I mean, first of all, there is the footprint of the company, but also the huge dependency. And that's also probably a little bit the complication between climate and nature, because of course there are two issues, but they are very different in the way they, you know, the business interacts with them. A lot of businesses have a footprint on nature and maybe little dependency. Others are exactly the opposite, huge dependency on nature, maybe be kind of average and low dependent um, impacts, but they all the disclosure will bring this to fore, and then all of a sudden, especially companies that have a lot of dependency, a lot of imp a small impact, they are going to start thinking, I better act and push my my peer to do something different. So hopefully, this also will create this kind of coalitions that need to be mobilized and say we are in all this together. It doesn't even if I do something perfect in my own little farm and my neighbors don't do as for nature there are no boundaries and then my you know my you know his impacts are going to be my impacts so that i think also is something else that is coming to the clarity of having to work at the ecological level you know and an ecosystem level um so that's basically i think the other op opportunity is to start thinking more in an integrated way. So World Business Council, what I really like is that we have, you know, the structure of the program of our strategy is around three imperatives. So is there is nature, climate and equity. And this means that these three and the, the message that we are sending is that we need to address these three together. And now we can't do one tomorrow and then, you know, uh, wait for another five years to address the other. That's the imperatives it means that these three areas need to be addressed now together. So we're also moving into internally to say, how do we propose to businesses ways to create synergies, uh, economies of scale, exchanges. There is so much also knowledge, from example, from the conservation people that could be helpful to the climate people, especially if we start talking about natural climate solution. How do we create, you know, win-wins for everybody in a company that has to address everything at the end of the day, right? And in terms of nature, first of all, their, their footprint, and then also this idea of going positive. So the nature positive agenda is another big topic that is coming through. And this is the conservation, you know, the uh, Convention of Biological Diversity is putting that forward, which is the equivalent of the net zero, right? So you have a net zero and you have a, a nature positive. The, both of them have to come together. But if you do it well, there are a lot of points of synergies and complementarity between the two. And we, we, we've seen a few businesses kind of move towards that net positive. Some have net positive strategies. The, the built environment sector in the UK is actually quite forward leading in, in, in that kind of 
uh, certainly a biodiversity net gain approach anyway yeah. i think yeah. for a lot i think for a lot of businesses um and like a lot of sustainability professionals that are perhaps working for smaller businesses as well um their their relationship with nature right now might only be looking through the lens of kind of carbon offsets and the carbon markets and looking to kind of help decarbonize through um those kind of uh you know reforestation programs that are elsewhere in which you know some some people you know some businesses do get criticized for that some people believe that it's kind of you're just moving the, the problem elsewhere um and mainly if you're that's kind of you're, you're overly relying on yeah. kind of carbon offsets and nature to to do the work for you and you, you mentioned that um that kind of interrelation between the two and in terms of a business strategy and approach to, to net zero you, you know you said that you know nature is a is a solution to this how how can businesses yeah. start to weave that into their net zero strategy in a way where they're not overtly reliant on yeah. it. What was best practice that like I suppose is what I'm asking here? No, you're right. And I think this is also where we have to always push for people to understand that there is a hierarchy. And the word hierarchy is such an important element because that means there is a sequence and that sequence has to be respected because otherwise if you do the, the last step first, you undermine the whole structure, right? So from a climate perspective, when we are talking about, you know, credits, and that's specifically the NCS Alliance pushes for natural climate solution generated credits. But we we work in this space that is, um, was, you know, has been named by our colleagues in the science-based target initiative, the beyond value chain mitigation. So this area that is basically saying, after you decarbonize or after you have your annual decarbonization, there is something on your journey to net zero, there is something that you leave on the table because there is no sector that can go down to zero or even net zero, let's say, uh, you know, quickly, so quickly to basically be able to claim a net zero. There is a journey. For hard to abate sector, that journey is even harder because the hard to abate sector, well, it goes without saying it's in the word, but there are sectors where there is there are technological barriers, there are, uh, you know, investment barriers that these will require more years. So on the journey to net zero, even if they do things in line with science-based targets, you know, and in line with their, you know, net zero, they're still going to have, a, you know, emissions. These are the unabated emissions. And this is what we are saying. They, they, we need as society also to start doing something about these because if we really want to get to remain below the 1.5, we can't leave all that on the table. So the this space that is called to you know to clarify that this is not these are not the decarbonization measure that you take in scope one, two, and three, which is your value chain, but these are beyond your value chain, needs also to be part of your journey. So on a yearly basis, take action and do something about this by investing, helping others to decarbonize. So for example, by you know, in funding projects to avoid deforestation, funding projects to keep forest standing, you know, the large reservoirs of carbon, forests are basically, you know, carbon sinks and reservoirs, right? Um, or, you know, improving land management or restoration. Uh, so this, this sequence, so first and foremost, do what you have to do, what you must do to be aligned with science in your scope one, two, and three. And then start weaving in on a yearly basis these, you know, uh, projects or these investments beyond value chain, and that is the ideal. And this, and the other thing is, if you start investing in beyond value chain, so in these carbon credits today, invest in natural climate solutions. These are available now and can do the work now. Then little by little, also the technological solutions will come to market. So it's also to find that right balance between what is available now that can do the work now, which we desperately need now, and then start also thinking about the future because we will keep, we will at a certain point, nature will be hopefully get to the place where land has been restored, the forest standing has been protected. So we will need more technological solutions to remove carbon when we all get to net zero. So this is obviously the big picture, ambitious picture. So again, it is really important that we all understand that it's not either or game here, it's all in, right? Now, within this all in, each of us has its own area of specialty, right? I work on natural climate solution with my, you know, big team. Others work on technology. We should, you know, we are all in this in the same game. It's not about competition. 
and we all have to support each other because this is a complicated game where we really need every single tool piece of the puzzle. So the you know carbon core principles that I was talking about, the ICVCM. Then there is VCMI that is developing a very important piece of the puzzle, which is claims. Claims are going to make a big difference to be for the integrity piece and also to create the business case for investing beyond value chain because of course people are saying there are a lot of you know money coming but a lot of companies are going to say wait a second why should i invest beyond my decarbonization if i can't claim anything right so the vcmi claim journey will give companies the opportunity to differentiate themselves for what they do in addition to decarbonization and then the natural climate solution community will come forward with ideas. OK, how do we distinguish then um, carbon credits that come from technological solutions such as or, you know, I don't know, uh, investments in renewable energy to investments in natural climate solutions, which have additional attributes that we want to talk about, you know, the for example, in benefits to the communities and benefits to nature that are intrinsically part of a nature, a natural climate solution. You, you mentioned a really good point there that, you know, we're not in competition with, with whatever. This is this is all part of the, the plethora of solutions that are all going to be required to, to respond to the kind of twin crises of, of the ecological breakdown and, and, and the climate. But I suppose in a way that there is a danger that, that it does get viewed as a competition in, in the future because demand for nature-based solutions probably is going to you know outstrip supply certainly at the moment as the market kind of until it matures and kind of gets to a, a more kind of uh, better understanding of the role that they play which you've just kind of expertly outlined but more generally we're trying to kind of uh, restore um, a land um, our land and, and I mean that globally the land in general whilst you know other areas are looking to um, expand, you know, urbanization is happening at increased yeah. rates. Uh, the population's growing, and that needs to, they, you know, this population as it grows needs to be housed and fed. I mean, I suppose it sounds a weird question to say, but is there an, enough land for for, for for nature across side all of this? I know the answer is yes, but some people might view that and say, actually, no, those other aspects are more important. So how do we how do we find yeah. the balance? Well, I think this is also where. Uh, because there are limits, you know, there is also limits to what you can restore and um, and there might be areas where, for example, you might, you know, have communities that are not interested in these projects and part of NCS is really about getting this permission to be and in involvement of the communities and so, of course, indigenous peoples, but local communities as well. But this is why I'm saying technological solutions will also become more important because we might get to the point where we have done maximum restorations where we can, maximum protection where we must. Then the land where there is also a third area, a third type of intervention, which is actually, I think, is, is considered the second best, which is the improved management. And this is the agriculture and forest and other land use space, you know, uh, sectors that is a huge opportunity where, you know, maybe it's not going to go into the voluntary carbon market, but they have, they must start thinking about managing their, their, um, their activities in a way that still, you know, is generates production. So there are produce, you know, productive lands, but in line with biodiversity and climate change. So the famous climate smart agriculture, which has the double benefit of protecting the production, because also, you know, it's it's a climate change will also have an impact on agriculture. So if you start, if you don't change the way you're gonna start, you're thinking about producing, you're gonna have also an impact on your own production. And these areas can really be managed in a way that improves the biodiversity and improves also the carbon sequestration. It's obviously there are a lot of issues related, you know, let's say it's more complicated to measure and monitor, but new technologies are coming to the fore in terms of also, you know, new, I, you know, basically um, ways to do a re with remote sensing ways to make sure that actually the, the carbon is, is there in a permanent way and so on to make sure that people also get a benefit out of that for investing in their own land to to use their land for multiple 
benefit. So I think in a way what we are looking at when you're talking about natural climate solution, you are take, saying nature does not is not only producing food and fiber or in fuel, but is also producing carbon. Carbon has a value. It should be higher and people should pay for that. So we are creating a new business, right? We want to involve communities and that's why this is my personal view, but I think when we create a natural climate solution program, project and program, the ideal well, way is to have communities involved, not just as a beneficiary because they get a check at the end of the month, but actually involved because they take care of the land and they own the credit and then they sell the credit. So their, their business, is to generate carbon sequestration or removal credits, and then they sell it. So they have a complete, um, not just say they have a, they have a interest in maintaining that land in that way because that becomes their revenue stream. Wow, what a what a great outlook that is. Um, it's 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 great to see this conversation around nature kind of evolve as more people understand the the value that it brings, not just yeah. economically but that socially as we as we touched upon and it sounds like there's a lot of big frameworks and development which will hopefully kind of really help solidify this in the in the moving months um do you know, i don't want to keep you uh, any, any longer you, you've given us so much information already it sounds like there's an awful lot of, of work to be getting done so um, i won't keep any more so thank you so much uh, for spending time to talk to me today no thank you matt it was a real pleasure and come back anytime we have lots to talk about always i mean we are really there to spread the you know the message about good investment in high quality natural climate solution that are good for people environment and climate <laughs> no absolutely we'll be sure to keep in touch as those developments take place Fantastic. as well It'll be great to retouch this uh, and for everyone who is watching at home we'll be back with another susty talk very soon and in the meantime stay safe stay positive and keep up the susty talk Thank you.